Welcome, Horlings, to another Game Hoarder production. I am proud to bring to you, in this Ronst October 2022, Dark Seed Motherfucking 2, y'all! It has been 11 years since we have entered the world of Dark Seed. That's right, Dark Seed 1 was released 11 years ago, and my god, was the quality fucking terrible. I think that was back when I had a microphone uh, pointed into the computer to pick up sound effects before I was using a recorder that would just pick up on sound directly. Alright, let's, uh, yeah, so the game, first of all, is not the easiest game to get running here. But we do have the CD-ROM version here, so the voices will be fully voice acted. And let me tell you, they are fantastic. And I mean that in, uh, in other words, they are terrible. Terrible. <laughs> but it gives, uh, it gives the game a certain kind of flair. Um, there's only so much I can do voice acting. So it's always, I think it's always a little bit better to have different voice actors. But I know you guys love hearing the game hoarder fucking voice act. But anyways, when there's a CD-ROM version, we do a CD-ROM version. Let's sit back and relax. Make sure you've watched Dark Seed 1. It's a single video, under an hour. Just under an hour for the whole game. I believe this one's a little bit longer, but to be honest, I hadn't completed this way back in the day. So I got pretty much to the end, and I don't think I finished it. So let's go ahead and let's, let's check this one off the list. It's been 11 years in the making, baby, and I know many of you have been wanting to see this completed. This is FMV Rita, at its finest. Rita, where are you? Oh shit, hold on. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the audio and the text were showing up. Rita! Where are you? Where are you? Text will not show up during these FMV sequences. It will show up during the actual gameplay. Help me, Mike. Help me, Mike. Help me, Mike. Help me, Mike. Yeah, Mike, help her. You dick. Help me. Mike looking goofy as ever. It's the same dream. Night after night. I'm searching for Rita in the dark world, but something unspeakable starts chasing me. I never make it back through the portal in time. It's been more than a year since I foiled the Ancient's plans to grow an alien embryo in my brain, and still the dark world haunts me. Rita's murder is just the latest reminder that no place is safe from the darkness. Not even my hometown. Alright folks, here we go. Dark Sea 2, baby! Come in. The door's open. Your mother let me in, Dawson. I had some more questions to ask you about the murder. Am I a suspect, Sheriff? Now we have to look at everybody, Dawson. Especially everyone who was close to Rita. Rita and I weren't that close, Sheriff. Now, we all know you and Rita just were an fucking. item back in high school.
That was 15 years ago. I moved away and only came back recently. Yes, we checked. You headed up an advertising agency in Frisco. But you've been living with your mother for the past year. Oh! Rita and I didn't really see each other much since I moved back home. Well, just how much contact did you have with her? Look, we only saw each other a few times. I see. Were you having a relationship? She tugged on my penis, but that's about it. I asked her out a few times, but she was always too busy with the library and stuff. What sort of stuff? She always had excuses for not going out with me. What kinds of excuses? She had some kind of reading group she always went to. A.K.A. Bukaki Party. And did you ever attend one of these reading group meetings? No. I don't like being around other people these days. So, you were always trying to get alone with her. We weren't intimate if that's what you're getting at. She did not touch my pee pee! Well, I sort of wanted to have a relationship, but Rita didn't. And that's why you killed her. <laughs> it's blunt, dude. I didn't kill her. If you didn't kill her, Dawson, why are you getting so upset? Look, Sheriff, I cared about Rita. I want to find out who killed her as much as you do. Well, just how much did you care for Rita? I'm getting a headache, Sheriff. Can we put this off until later? All right, Dawson, but stick around town. The feds will want to talk to you when they get here. Feds? You mean the FBI? That's right. I don't much like the idea of them trampling over my turf, but the mayor wants me to bring him in. What's Mayor Fleming's interest in Rita's murder? Eh, he wants this case solved quickly with the election coming up and all. Seems he has some friends at the Bureau, and believe me, they won't go easy on you. I wish I had something to tell you, Sheriff. I really do. Well, if you remember anything, see me down at the station. But your memory had better return by today, or things won't look good for you. Suck my nuts. I used to love movies about swashbucklers. They made me feel like I could be a hero. It's too valuable. I better leave it here. My f your fencing trophy is too valuable? The reception stinks in here. All I'd get is snow. You can tell this is like the 80s with these wooden walls. The stereo stopped working when I was a senior. I never bothered to get it fixed. This closet has been locked ever since I can remember. The key was lost a long time ago. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. This closet has been locked ever since I can... Probably, probably a key under the fucking rug, huh, buddy? I'm not tired. Okay. The 
the stereo stopped working when I was a senior. I never bothered to get it fixed. I'm trying to walk through this fucking door. There we go. Got to right click to change the move icon. That good helps. in here. Mom must be cooking something special. Mama Dukes, what you cooking, biatch? Mom looks pretty good considering all she's been through. Forget what all these icons mean. Morning, Mom. So it takes the sheriff to wake you up, Mike? Look, bitch, don't get all haughty with me. I don't feel like talking about the sheriff, Mom. Fine. You never feel like talking. Why does this guy remind me of Jeffrey Dahmer all of a sudden? I think I'll eat over at Hank's for breakfast. You should know better than to eat the greasy food at that diner. I thought you were going to start eating healthier. You're not in high school anymore, you know. He also reminds me of Kip from... Napoleon Dynamite. You know, you woke me up with all those pots banging. Sorry, Mike, but it's time that you got up. The sun has been shining for hours. But, Mom... Gosh, Mom, you treat me like I'm in high school again. Well, then start acting your age. You came home to recover from your nervous breakdown, which is fine, but you've been here for a year now. When are you going back to your job? Bro's been off for a year? Must be nice. You know how much LP and I could fucking do? Go easy on me. What I went through last year was far worse than anything you could imagine. I've lost a husband and a sister to cancer. Your father left me no insurance money and I have arthritis. You don't see me checking into a mental hospital with a nervous breakdown. It wasn't a nervous breakdown. It was... You wouldn't understand. I understand that you're always moping around and acting like a bum. Come on, Mike. Why don't you finish up that novel you were writing? You're ashamed of me, aren't you? No, son, I'm not ashamed of you. I just wish I knew what was bothering you. You were always full of energy and life. Since that nervous breakdown, all you do is stare at the walls. I'm having a hard time getting motivated. You know, Mike, you're late for your doctor appointment. You're never going to snap out of your depression unless you see the doctor. And after that, I'd like you to do some errands for me. This bitch is demanding. But I've got things to do today, Mom. Like what? You I gotta do masturbate. A damn thing around here anymore. And take a shower and then masturbate again. I'm starting to get a headache. Well, that's what your medicine is for. You know where to find it. By the way, Mom, thanks for taking care of me this past year. I love you, Mike. I just want you to get well again. Well, I did have an alien object implanted into my fucking dome piece, Mom. Now keep cooking, bitch! The game hoarder's fucking hungry. Give me this yellow fucking magnet. What else do you got that I can steal from your old ass? Mom always kept the sink spotless. Mom always loved this drawing I made as a kid. Too bad she doesn't care as much about my writing. Bro, she got a drawing from 30 years ago? Fucking insane.
When I was a kid, my family used to gather here to watch television. That's a good idea. Let's watch some TV. On giving hot lunches to the school children, in other parts of the country, law enforcement officials are still bewildered about the murder of local she librarian like Rita Scanlon last week after the high school reunion. When asked about potential suspects, Sheriff Willard Butler replied, Michael, you and your kind are in grave danger once again. The ancients have returned. I am sending something to assist you. You must act quickly. Warn that this is the second local death this year, and residents should always be alert. On the national news scene... There's someone at the front door. Well, she... It's a ticket for a traveling carnival over in the park. Damn, that was rude. Slam the door in the fucker's face. Whenever I look at one of these smiley face magnets, I wonder what it's smiling at. My old 35mm camera. There's only one shot left on this roll. This ticket will admit me to the traveling carnival in the park. Cool, fun! These photos were taken when I was in high school. My father was alive then. Those were happier times. Hey, that's Jack. He likes to think he's tough with that motorcycle and all. But he's about the only new friend I've made since I returned home. Well, are you just gonna stand there gaping at me, Mikey boy? Or are you gonna take a load off your feet? What brings you here, Jack? My motorcycle, dumb cough! You need to have your ears checked. Actually, I stopped by because I saw the sheriff's patrol car drive off. I was worried about my favorite recovering mental case. Don't joke about my nervous breakdown, Jack. I thought you were my friend. Relax, Michael boy, relax. Geez, you must be under a lot of stress. They say your sense of humor is the first thing to go. The sheriff thinks I murdered Rita. Yeah, I know. I overheard Deputy Brown talking in the diner. You're the number one suspect. You overheard the deputy? That's great. Everyone must know by now. It's a small town, people talk. But that could work to our advantage. I have a plan. I'm too hungry to think right now, Jack. How about joining me at the diner? I don't think I'm very welcome there. Not after that stunt I pulled with a jukebox. Let's meet here after you've done stuffing your face. You know, Jack, I still can't remember what happened that night. Nothing happened! You know that, and I know that. It's hopeless. I feel like the biggest patsy since Oswald. Don't worry, we'll get you out of this mess. Then we can party. I've got an appointment with Dr. Sims soon. Let's get together afterwards. You're seeing that quack? Don't waste your time with that head shrinker. Listen to your old pal Jack instead. Okay, we'll meet here after you're done with Dr. Sigmund Fraud. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for believing me. Now, don't get all mushy on me. I'll meet you right here after your doctor's appointment. Until then, hang loose. It's like a 
fucking wish version of Fonzie with the gimp limp. I still find that a map helps me get to places quickly. Hank's diner and the pool hall are on this street. This is the business district where Dr. Sim's office is. This is the civic center. This is the neighborhood where my house is. The carnival has set up here in the park. I've been finding reasons to avoid going to Dr. Sim's office during the past week. Rita used to live just around the corner. It's locked. Nobody home. There's Paul Cooper. For a guy who runs a hardware store, he doesn't keep his house in very good shape. Nice lawn, though. Bro's got a deck on his roof. It's fucking old school, baby. Hi, Mr. Cooper. I'm Mike Dawson. Remember me? Bro's sure, Mike. spraying water I all over you. your pants. So how's the hardware store business? Great. I've given myself a vacation for the first time in about three years. The store is closed right now. I'm just going to relax and water my lawn for the next week or two. <laughs> like fucking non-stop, I guess. He's already fucking drowned that shit. Does your lawn need that much water? It's dry. It's always dry. Gotta get it ready. You know how it is. It's nice to have a pretty lawn. I'll have a big water bill, but I don't care. As long as it keeps pumping, I'll keep watering. Yeah, you can overwater your lawn, by the way, you fucking numb nut. Pretty terrible news about the murder. It certainly was. The second murder this year. I don't know what's going on in this town anymore. And, uh, is that a fucking bamboo tree? Where the fuck is this? I was wondering how well you knew Rita Scanlon. Rita? Well, she lives, uh, lived across the street. We'd wave to each other. Why? Was she a friend of yours? I was trying to stick it in her pooter. We went to high school together a few years back. Yes? I didn't really know her back then. She moved in over there about eight years ago, but I didn't talk to her much. What do you know about a second murder? Old man Ramirez died in a fire. Some say it was an accident, but I think it was done in. A real shame. He was a steady customer at the hardware store. Liked to read, too. Do you know of anything else strange going on in town? No. Why do you ask? Nothing ever happens here. The town is full of cobwebs and stagnation. It needs a good cleansing. Until the murders, the place was just too quiet. Why do you say the town's too quiet? It was as if the town was waiting. Waiting for a messenger or something. So I water the lawn and get it ready. I want to have a nice lawn ready for the messenger when he comes. Uh, I think I have to leave now. You take real good care of yourself, Paul. 
Take care of yourself, Mike. You might want to move around a bit. <clears throat> the faucet's stuck. I can't turn it off with my bare hands. I'm trying to save this guy some money. I'm not climbing up there. I'm afraid of heights. Bro, that's like two of you up. Pussy. the deputy standing guard in front of Rita's house. She wasn't killed at home. There must be some evidence inside that the police are protecting. Is it okay if we talk, deputy? Uh, I'm not sure, Mike. What do you want? <laughs> you look like you're on guard duty. I'm keeping watch over Rita Scanlon's house. A week after the murder? I'm just following orders, Mike. I'm not supposed to let anyone in. We've had problems with vandalism before. Somebody shot up the fucking real estate sign. What for? What's in there? Not a thing. But we need to keep Rita's house intact until the FBI comes. They'll want to go over it with a fine tooth comb. When's your shift over? Who knows? We've been working overtime at the sheriff's office ever since the body was discovered. This case is being given top priority. Unless there's an emergency or something, I have to stay put. So, how's the murder investigation going? Come on, Mike! You know I shouldn't be talking to you about that. Go on now, let me do my job. Well, fuck you, deputy. <clears throat> I've got this goofy fucking cycloptic scooter dog down here. Some kind of devil shit. I don't recognize any resemblance. Hank's diner in the pool hall next door played a large part in my teenage years. I took Rita to the diner on our first date when we were both juniors in high school. Got to do a lot of walking around, talking, and familiarizing ourselves with the characters, folks. That's what this first episode is about. Oh! Hit me with some FMV. Hank's Diner isn't the swinging place it used to be, but Hank still does enough business to keep the place going. Hank! How's it going, Hank? Uh, my back's been acting up, but otherwise not too bad. How are you, Mike? I'm starving. What have you got to eat around here? Like you haven't seen my menu a thousand times. What are you hungry for? Ham and eggs, grits, pancakes? All of the above. Pancakes? Rita and I used to come here for pancakes after church. You two were quite an item back when you were in high school. Shame about what happened to her. Real tragedy. Who do you think murdered Rita? 
Oh, I can't imagine it was anyone from around here. But he's one sick dude, whoever he is. Sick? Murder isn't a disease. It's evil. Relax, Mike. It's just a figure of speech. I don't think anyone's going to show the killer any compassion when they catch up with him. Have you heard any more about the investigation? Deputy Brown stopped by to get some coffee and donuts on his way to Rita's place. He was saying that the FBI might be called in. Doc Larson was telling us some pretty grisly stuff. I heard about the FBI from the sheriff. Say, Mike, weren't you with Rita the night she was killed? Rita was my date to the high school reunion. Well, what happened? She got killed in the park near the Ramirez mansion. Didn't you walk her home? Nah. I walk Lucy McGibbons home. I can't remember about that night, Hank. It's these headaches. Mike, you and I go way back. As a friend, I'm telling you that you better start remembering quick. Deputy Brown was saying that the sheriff doesn't want to waste any time on this case. I'm seeing Dr. Sims in a short while. Maybe he can jog my memory. Don't waste your money on head shrinkers, Mike. Whenever I forget something, I just retrace my steps. Yeah, but I was really high on cocaine that night. What did Doc Larson have to say? He wouldn't go into any details because he wants to keep certain things from the public. I haven't seen Doc Larson so excited since that other murder. What other murder? Old man Ramirez. He died in a fire a few weeks back and left his wife a very rich widow. Funny how Rita died so close to his house. Rita was murdered in a public park. How could they keep any details secret? Doc Larson had her body moved to the morgue before dawn. Deputy Brown said the sheriff wasn't too happy about that. Didn't give him much of a chance to examine the crime scene first. I need some fresh air. You don't look well, Mike. Why don't you go out for a walk? Nice day for it. I think I'll just do that, Hank. See you later. Take care, Mike. I don't know, Mike. It's looking pretty suspicious, buddy. None of these songs is worth spending a quarter on. I don't seem to be as interested in music as I once was. Oh, come on. You gotta have fucking... some Jimi Hendrix on there or something. Let's go talk to more people. We There's have to Jimmy flesh Garner out the story. And Melissa Fleming. Jimmy's the type of loser I'd expect to see in a place like this. But it's surprising to find the mayor's wife here. Hi, Jimmy. Long time no see. Well, well, it's Mr. Big Shot Writer. What brings you down to this part of town? Slumming? <laughs> Fuck you, Jimmy. How about a game of pool? Cut the crap, Dawson. We might have been friends once, but that was a long time ago. Well, bro, we'll crawl up your asshole. What happened to you? You were a straight-A student until you dropped out. I guess I'm just the town's bad seed. You went off to college and joined the establishment. I stayed here and became a statistic. We were friends in high school. Why are you so angry with me now? 
Let's just say that you and I don't share the same interests anymore. You're a real tough guy now, aren't you, Jimmy? You got that right, chump. I'm the local wise guy, so stay out of my way. I hear that your interests these days aren't exactly on the up and up. So what? There's a lot going on in this town that ain't exactly on the up and up. Tell me, Jimmy, how come the sheriff leaves you alone? That's easy in this town. That flatfoot doesn't know his butt from an armadillo. But I got the goods on him. He doesn't bother me. What do you know about Sheriff Butler? I know he's down here trying to get away from what happened in Dallas. Yeah, he's a real champion of justice, all right. This bitch has got an everlasting cigarette in the background. Maybe I should go. Yeah, get out before I throw you out. Jimmy, you're like four foot eleven, bro. Calm the fuck down. Hey, remember me? I'm Mike Dawson. It's been a long time. Not long enough to suit me. Hey, why the cold shoulder? What makes you think you're worth giving the cold shoulder to? When did you take up smoking? Don't you know it's bad for your health? Yeah. Well, there's lots of things that are bad for your health. Yeah, but smoking is worse. So what are you doing here in the pool hall? Seeing Jimmy? What are you insinuating? I'm a married woman, I'll have you know. I just came in here for a smoke. I heard that you married Mayor Fleming. He used to be my dad's partner, you know. Oh, please don't give me that. He's old enough to be my father routine. I've heard it all. He's old enough to be your father. Poor Rita. It's a shame what happened to her. Poor Rita? <laughs> that little tramp had it coming to her. Damn! Why all this nasty talk about Rita? Ask around, Dawson. Just ask around. Now leave me alone. I was never much of a pool player. I just liked the atmosphere of this place. With the smoke and low lights, it gave me a feeling of solitude that was hard to find somewhere else. Well, I can already tell you this game is going to be uh, much longer than the original, which was completed in under an hour. I don't know if I did a speedrun back then or what, but the dialogue alone is going to eat up this first hour.
Got to use his icon to figure out where you can The mayor go campaigned to. on how he was going to rid our streets of the homeless, but I guess they just got driven into sheds like this. Another evil that's been hidden but still exists. I found an old coat hanger. This might be useful. I once read a story about how a thief used a wire to open a lock. Alright, we got a coat hanger. We can perform abortions now. Fuck yeah. Civic Center. We used to joke about the sheriff's office, courthouse, and morgue all being next door to each other. First they tie them, then they try them, then they fry them. Andy and Barney would be right at home here, but this ain't Mayberry. And unless I can get the sheriff off my back, there ain't going to be a happy sitcom ending. Hi, Sheriff. I just came in to get out of the heat. Sure. Dawson, I was hoping that you'd show up. You're in your office on weekends too, huh? That's right, Dawson. I'm a dedicated public servant. I'm gonna stay right here until we get that murder solved. Unless there's an emergency, of course. Well, I think I'll be going now. You know, Dawson, sooner or later you're gonna make a mistake. And then I'm gonna lock you up for the rest of your natural life. Well, if that's not accusatory, I don't know what the fuck is. And fuck you, Sheriff. You can suck my 1980s mustache, bitch. Now excuse me while I go to the fucking carnival. The carnival has been set up here in the park for more than a week now. I wonder when it's going to finally open. Shit, the carnival is not open. I haven't been past the Ramirez Mansion in a long time. It's one of the town's oldest landmarks. They used to own all of the land around the park before they donated it to the town. Hello, Mrs. Ramirez. I'm Mike Dawson. I grew up in this town. Did you? Well, what do you want? I want to fuck. I was just admiring your house. It is lovely, isn't it? It's over a century old. At one time, it was the only building around here for miles. So your family's been here a long time? My late husband's family, actually. But they're all dead and gone. It's just me now. You must get lonely sometimes. Nonsense! That's a come on. I have my church, my books, and I have my money. It must cost a lot to insure a place like this. My dad used to be in the insurance business. I'm sorry to hear that. Those insurance people are godless swine, worshipping nothing but the almighty dollar. Why they even tried to cheat me out of my husband's life insurance? I finally had to take them to court, but I won. I couldn't help but notice all the religious icons you have. Yes, 
They ward off the evil that is running amok here in Crowley. This town used to be a God-fearing community, but now I don't dare to leave my house except to go to church. Why do you think the town is corrupted by evil? Why, just stroll along the street, and you will find vice and decadence behind every door. The church is our only hope for salvation. You do attend church, don't you? I have no idea what that is. I go to church whenever I get the chance, I guess. You should go to church every Sunday, at least, and more often than not, when possible. There are dark forces at work here, and your soul must be fortified to resist temptation. Thank you, Mrs. Ramirez. I appreciate your time. God be with you, young man. talk to. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. This is where Rita was murdered. Tired. I was telling you to check the bench out, not take a fucking nap on it. Rita, who could have done this to you? The fuck was that? Who's there? This guy's jerking off in the bush. I knew it! Who are you? My name's Slim. You're Mr. Dawson, aren't you? The one they think murdered Rita Scanlon? My name is Mike Dawson, but I didn't murder Rita. I know. A voice told me that you were innocent. You don't think that's strange, do you? Hearing voices in your head? No, I don't think that's strange at all. I've been hearing voices myself. I knew that people had you all wrong, Mr. Dawson. You and me, we belong to a much larger world. One that most people couldn't begin to fathom. You're right. No one believes some of the things I've seen and heard. Why are you wearing that getup? I'll have you know that I'm wearing the uniform of protection. Excuse me? What did you say? It designates me as the protector of this town and endows me with special powers. What do you protect the town from? There are dark forces at work. An evil power is lurking in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to hatch its latest plot. I know exactly what you mean. I felt the same way for over a year. 
Feeling isn't enough, Mr. Dawson. You've got to act. It's my duty to put a stop to their plans. Stop them before they take over the entire world. What sort of powers does your uniform give you? This uniform renders me invulnerable. When I wear it, nothing can harm me. Well, nothing except for a little poison ivy every now and then. <laughs> Where did you get this uniform of protection? A woman delivered it to me. A very wise and noble woman. You're referring to the Keeper of the Scrolls, aren't you? No, no, no. Eleanor, my mail carrier delivered it to me. She's some cutie, let me tell you. <laughs> the uniform came out of a catalog. Why are you hiding in the bushes? I'm checking out the murder site. The criminal always leaves a clue at the scene of the crime. I don't know what you hope to find here. The sheriff must have gone over this place with a fine tooth comb. The sheriff? <laughs> don't make me laugh! <laughs> That buffoon couldn't solve a jigsaw puzzle. He has no conception of the significance of this crime. Did you know Rita? I knew Miss Scanlon was the town librarian. At least that's what she claimed. But I have my suspicions about her. What was suspicious about Rita? She was involved with something. Something unclean. I haven't figured out what it is yet, but when I do, it will expose the evil lurking under this town. You seem to be the only one who really understands what is going on. Who do you think killed Rita? I think she was murdered by aliens from another dimension. You know about the ancients. So the Keeper of the Scrolls was right. They were involved with Rita's death. Of course it was the ancients. Who else could have committed such a horrible crime? It had to be the ancients. Finally, someone else who knows about the Dark World. I can't even confide in my mother or my best friend about this. I'm so glad I met you, Slim. Or it might have been OJ working in cahoots with the Trilateral Commission. I'll betcha. Then again, it could have been the International Communist Conspiracy. This looks like their handiwork. Uh, I've got to go now. Wait! Before you leave, I did find something the sheriff overlooked. It's a ticket stub to last week's high school reunion. Where did you find this ticket? It was lying underneath the bushes. Miss Scanlon must have dropped it when the killer attacked her. Do you mind if I have the ticket, Slim? I don't have many mementos of Rita. Take it, Mr. Dawson. It's not much of a clue, and besides, I've got theories about a hired hitman and a satanic cult to follow up on. Don't worry, I'll find Rita's murderer and prove your innocence. Gee, thanks, Slim. That makes me feel a lot better. Glad to have your vote of confidence, Mr. Dawson. Well. I've got some investigating to do. Oh, by the way, I live out behind the pool hall if you need to get in touch with me.
right, all kinds of interesting folks here in this game. So he gave us a ticket stub that looks like. Rita's ticket stub to the high school reunion is the only memento I have of her. Let's go ahead and do a quick save here. Under game order rules, baby! I have a splitting headache. I better go see Dr. Sims. Make yourself comfortable, Mike. I've been expecting you. Awful headache, Doctor. Have you been taking your medicine? The medicine doesn't work. Can't we try something else? We could try hypnosis. It's proven effective with many of my patients. You may experience some unsettling dreams, but it might also help your memory. Still having trouble remembering things. This is to be expected. You're still recovering from a nervous breakdown. The murder last week has further exacerbated the problem. Why can't I remember what happened at the reunion? I still can't believe it's always a shock to learn the a first friend game has been was killed. over. And you were the last one to see Rita alive, right? The human mind tends to block out painful memories. I just wish I could remember more about what happened that night. Don't worry, Mike. The memories will come back in time. Sheriff Butler suspects me of Rita's murder. Yes, the sheriff was in here asking about you. I told him I didn't think you were capable of such an act. I'm feeling much better, Doctor. I don't think I need to see you anymore. <laughs> I disagree, Mike. I know you're frustrated with you're the really slow progress, up, but these things take time. But perhaps some hypnotherapy will speed up your recovery. I think it's happening all over again. Have you been having more of your dark world experiences? I've been dreaming about the dark world again. Uh-huh. Voices from the dark world have contacted me. I see. I've seen Rita in my dreams, too. That's good. Perhaps it's a sign your repressed memories will resurface soon. I may be going back there and soon. Yes, of course, Mike. But I really can't approve of you entertaining these fantasies. We need to work on your memory of events as they really are. You know, what happened last year wasn't a hallucination. It was real. Or so you believe, Mike. It isn't all that uncommon for people to suffer delusions of alternate universes. 
Even things as bizarre as aliens implanting embryos in human brains. But, Dr. Sims, everything I told you is true. Yes, of course. But tell me, what does your friend Jack think of all this? I never told Jack about the Dark World. But you told me he was your closest friend. I trust Jack, but I don't tell him everything. Well, from what you've told me about this Jack, I don't think he's a very positive influence on you. My advice would be to steer clear of him. Try not to associate with him so much. Jack's the only friend I've got. Nonetheless, I think he's a bad influence. I want you to think about severing your relationship with him. I do want to get better, but the thought of being hypnotized frightens me. Mike, I know that the thought of losing control over your mind terrifies you. But I believe hypnotism will be of benefit in your case. Why don't we give it a try? All right. You've convinced me. Hypnotize me. You're feeling sleepy. You feel like you're drifting on a cloud, on a rubber raft at the swimming pool. All is calm. All is quiet. You are sleepy. Hmm. I feel so dizzy. This reunion banquet is giving me a headache. I need some fresh air. You always need fresh air, Mike. I swear. I don't know what's happened to you since you've moved away from here. And frankly, I don't like it. Come on, Rita. Give me a break. You know I've been... sick? Sick of people, you mean. You've become such a loner, Mike. You never want to go anywhere where there's people. You don't even want to visit any of my friends. Not your reading group again. Always busy doing stuff for the library. You never have any time to spend alone with me anymore. Why can't it be like it was when we were in high school? People change, Mike, but I don't care for the change that's come over you. You're drunk. I'll see you later. I have a friend to see. Fine. Just walk away. I hope the boogeyman gets you. Whew. Why am I so dizzy? I bet the punch is spiked. Is someone there? Don't play games. Mike? Is that you? Ah! <coughs> Mike? Are you awake? How's your headache now? Bizarre fucking dream. I was back in the dark world. It was so strange. The dark world again, huh? Hmm. It probably represents what you consider evil. An internal conflict, perhaps. I dreamed about Rita. We were back at the reunion. We were arguing. Perhaps it's a symbol of trying to resolve your inner turmoil. That's a good sign. Can you remember what you argued about? Just a little. It all seems so fuzzy. A common occurrence. Don't let it worry you. I was wrong about this hypnosis stuff. I'd like to do it some more. I'm glad it's working for you, Mike. But it looks like our time is up. If the headache comes back, we'll try more hypnosis. Thanks, Dr. Sims. I feel a whole lot better. It's good to know you're on the road to recovery, Mike. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.
All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for episode one of Dark Sea 2. Stay tuned for more. Romstocktober goodness, I am fucking killing it this month. Bitches! <laughs>